Oh my god, hey! Hello! What's my hair doing? I haven't seen a reflective surface in some time. It is Sunday, the 14th of April. Mm -hmm. And today is the day of the 2024 Laurence Olivier Awards. Celebrating some of the best of the last year of West End Theatre here in London. It's basically London Theatre's answer to the Tony Awards uh, on Broadway. And so we are heading, as we have done for the past few years, towards the Royal Albert Hall because we bought tickets to go and see the ceremony today. More info on that later on. But I will tell you, it has already been a morning. Yes. It has been a day already. It's been a morning and an afternoon because today, through spectacularly poor planning on my part and thinking I could be a woman who has it all, um, I decided that it would be a good idea to also accept the offer to go and interview an Olivier award-winning West End performer who you won't have seen that interview yet, but it's coming soon. Um, so, headed over to a theatre in the West End, did that, didn't want to be wearing the Olivier's outfit uh, because I knew that they would be in like rehearsal wear and that would be a lot and it would be just like casually backstage at a theatre so had a different outfit, had a suitcase with me, got changed in the public toilets of Piccadilly Circus, do not recommend, that was an adventure, um, and then dropped the suitcase off in bag storage that also had like tech equipment and tripod and ring light and stuff from the interview so now we are finally breathing. Oh, the other thing is that we're flying to New York tomorrow. <laughs> so also trying to check into our flights and like make sure we have good seats and that we're sitting together and all of the stress that comes with that. But we are putting it all out of our minds because today is all about the Olivier's. And we are heading to the Royal Albert Hall to go enjoy the ceremony. Let's take you with us and see what we can see, see what we can peer into of the green carpet. So as we approach the Royal Albert Hall, which is slightly further away than we realised, uh, we're just discussing who we're anticipating bringing the iconic fashions to the green carpet. It's a green carpet, it's a whole sustainability it's thing. It's grass. It's grass, basically. Um, Nicole Scherzinger, obviously, is going to give you some sort of a look. She was like, you made me wear that one black slip the entire run of the show. Now we're going we're gonna to liven it up. But also Marisha Wallace has mm -hmm. been wearing some gowns recently. She wore like <laughs> three different incredible gowns for that Rodgers and Hammerstein concert. <laughs> as an Olivier Award nominee, as a leading actress, she's gonna, she's gonna be wearing some sort of a sensational dress, I feel. I'm hoping we can see some of it. You never really know how much of it is uh, viewable as the public. It's sad not to be on the green carpet, but also that would be yet another stressful factor in the day that just wouldn't be necessary. Um, you made a good suggestion of who you think might turn a Luke. Well, I think David Cumming will. David Cumming of Operation Mincemeat. I don't know if, uh, because... But it might all come, like, Well, I'm like, are they going to coordinate? <coughs> or are they going to give you because... What was the event they were at before? <laughs> and I was coming... Oh, it was the Watson Stage Awards. Yeah. On stage at the Watson Stage Awards, they were very much giving, we are all going to a very different type of after party. <laughs> so, <laughs> intrigued to see intrigued to see what happens today but we have just arrived this is all very exciting let me show you so this is today's venue and the venue for the last few years in previous years it's been at the royal opera house i think it used to be at the south bank center before that uh, but recently the royal albert hall and then this is the whole process leading up to it there is the green carpet we have been discussing so much you can see cameras on cranes this of course is also um, a television broadcast the highlights of the Olivier Awards are shown later this evening on ITV and the entire ceremony I believe is free to stream online outside of the UK or the US uh, which is an annoying little detail to do with uh, the TV licensing rights basically uh, because otherwise it would undercut ITV who are the provider but I say if you want to be the provider you should really be showing it in its entirety and live but that's just me I know there isn't as much public interest in the theatre world as there is in film and TV yeah, for something like the BAFTAs something like the Academy Awards however perhaps if they were shown live in primetime British television just one day a year then maybe there would be there are various different outlets represented here and if you if you think 
you and I, tiny people on my camera, should be on the green carpet chatting to the award-nominated celebs next year, then at the Olivier Awards, perhaps someday. Um, oh, they've moved the photo up around this year, so it'll be the other side of that big Olivier Awards screen you're seeing there, so we won't necessarily see them as they're getting photographed, but we'll see them coming across, and very shortly, this will have become a huge hubbub of activity. There are TV people here, there are many news people, there are online outlets. It is all going on here on the steps of the Royal Albert Hall. As we're standing here, uh, we just met the very lovely mother of one of today's nominees, Amy Trigg, uh, who is nominated for Best Supporting Actress in a, musical. in a Musical for her performance in The Little Big Things as Agnes. Nothing short of iconic. Yes. Um, so, good luck to her today. Will she become a first-time Olivier Award winner later this afternoon? Well, to find out more um, about, well, okay, no, by the time that this is, by the time you're seeing this, you'll already know. You know things that we don't. I was going to say, go watch our predictions video. If you want, you can go back and watch our predictions video if you'd like to keep yourself in the dark. Yeah, I forgot how time worked for a moment there. Oh well. Okay, there's still no one on the carpet, um, uh, guest-wise, arrival-wise. So we're making the executive decision to go and take photos of our nice outfits, which I will show you in full view um, uh, momentarily when the opportunity arises. Uh, but to do this, and if anyone's uh, thinking of attending the Olivier Awards or has attended in the past and doesn't really know how to get nice photos You can take some inside. They usually have a photo op where you can hold an Olivier statuette Which is cool, which is novel and by all means get that photo But the lighting is not like the best for this as well. So we tend to do uh, There's a lovely open green area at the back of the Royal Albert Hall and though the building looks sensational From the front she doesn't look too bad from behind either. That sounded misogynistic. It's a building and if it's got a man's name, so if anything, it's a male building. I've lost my way with this one. So this is the back of the Royal Albert Hall. This is where you enter if you buy tickets for the Olivier Awards, if you're not a invited celebrity guest or nominee or performer, etc. Um, and then this is where we're going to head over the road here. That's the, is it called the Royal Albert Monument? The Victorian Albert Monument? Albert Monument. Albert Monument. Albert's involved. Um, all of this named and dedicated all of this area, if not for Queen Victoria, then for her beloved Prince Consort, Albert. As in almost every other year that we've done this, we are not the only people with this exact idea. And if I were a freelance photographer free on a Sunday, uh, you could do worse things than to come down here with a portable card reader and do a little bit of trade. You know what I mean? Uh, this is the view you're getting behind. You may recognize this from my Instagram. Um, that's it. That's the one. Let me show you what we're wearing. Before I do, uh, we're going to go and try and find some toilets because again, it's been an afternoon and we're not as young as we were. Uh, just met some uh, lovely young people who watch the YouTube videos, thank you so much, uh, who are seeing the Olivier Awards for the first time in person today. How exciting! How exciting is that? Um, I first saw them for the first time two years ago with Aaron James. I had never been before. A lot of people don't because, uh, you know, it's shown on television and it is expensive and it's a lot and it's not necessarily like geared towards the audience They're in the room. Quite long. They're long and like going to an awards show, it's not necessarily the most glamorous thing that you can think of. It gets like quite warm and busy it goes on for a long time and they're not their primary focus is not for the audience in the room who have bought tickets they have to think about the broadcast they have to think about all of the guests and the winners and the nominees and they have lots of different jobs to do uh, so there's all of that going on as well um, but for those that do decide to attend it can be very special Aaron is giving you green with the shoes with a three-piece suit with a nice little paisley floral tie moment and a pocket square looking fancy looking nice looking lovely Marcus is here catching the public's attention giving you bow and a peep 
It's giving you Bo Peep. Look at that. Who made your outfit, Marcus? Corey Dixon from Somebody Else's Guy. Look her up on Instagram. She's amazing. There you go. There you go. She's been styled today, ladies and gentlemen. And Mickey is giving Oscar Wilde flower arrangement. So we have flowers at the bottom and white and this like a little bit of pink, a little bit of like little pastely pink and these flowers. He said floral. He said spring. He cannot breathe. He, yeah. said, he said no carbs for 14 days. Don't do what I do, children. This is, this is, I'm still hungry right now. It's honestly not worth it, but I'm glad I feel nice. My advice to you is you really can't um, uh, allocate too much time for this process. We need angles, we need options, we need portrait mode in front of the building. When you have a glamorous outfit like this one, we also have some of the creatives doing the same thing. It's a popular idea. And Rachel is the vision here in purple. It's so Rachel reviewed everybody. So we're neglecting uh, our carpet observations right now, but we can tell you from social media that Bluey is at the Olivier's. Huge news for a very particular demographic and their parents. The vibes have been cute. Uh, we're going to head in. Uh, we could go spend some more time on the green carpet, but we'll get a better look at the outfits online later in photos than trying to like peer over a fence and look at all the chaos going on from a distance. So we're gonna head over into the Royal Albert Hall. Um, there's a little bit of time before we need to be in our seats. Of course, this is like TV filming, so it's got all of that going on as well. There are some elements that need to be quite strictly enforced. Um, but I plan to buy a bottle of champagne. I don't buy bottles of alcohol in the theater because the price is extortionate, but once a year I make an exception and it's the Olivier Awards and that is what I do. So I'm gonna go buy a bottle of champagne and have a nice time. I don't think I'm gonna be able to film necessarily at all inside the venue. Maybe you'll get some surprise footage. Uh, certainly not during the ceremony. So at some point we're gonna jump forwards in time and you're going to see us afterwards. I don't know when that will be. Uh, oh my God, hey. And also, oh my God. I'm emotionally exhausted, I'm emotionally overwhelmed. That was a lot. We have so much to talk about when we get home. You, I, and him. We are finally on the front steps. Me? Of the, that will be you. We are finally on the front steps of the Royal Albert Hall because they're letting anyone on them now as we are leaving the Olivier Awards 2024 with MasterCard. We're not leaving with MasterCard, but that's the sponsor who I've neglected to name this entire time as I've covered the awards. It's fine. Um, they know who they are. We're gonna go get our suitcase, get a train, and then get McDonald's, I reckon. Oh, yeah. In that order. And then we fly tomorrow. And then we fly tomorrow. And as it turns out, a uh, revelation that arrived via email during the ceremony, um, uh, I will be chatting about the Olivier Awards on BBC Radio 5 at 7.15 tomorrow morning. And I will not be awake. Aaron will not be awake. No. My parents might be listening because they do wake up that early. Um, I do not. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> ordinarily, neither do I. But I will watch on recap. <laughs> As you know, to be fair, you will wake me up and I will just be awake. I will. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have to go do some jobs. See you when we get back. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. It's been a day, <clears throat> everyone. But it's been Olivier Awards Day. Yeah, it has, which marks the final full day of us being in London for a bit. Yes, yes. In a matter <clears> of hours, we will be getting on a plane to go back to New York, which is very exciting. By the time you're seeing this, we will be in the sky <laughs> or in America. Yeah. One of the two. Um, let's, hold on. Let's, <clears throat> there we are. Lovely. So... Thought we would do our usual um, post Olivier's chat like we did last year. Mm -hmm. We've had the McDonald's already. We have. We had it on the train. Yes, we couldn't wait, and um, also we were, we didn't kind of realise what times we would be getting back. We were cold. We were hungry. It's been a long time. Olivier Awards, thick program. <laughs> Everyone gets one of these uh, if you're in the audience of the <laughs> Olivier Awards, um, but they show you the nominees in order, so that's one of the first things we checked when we got in, was like, <laughs> what order are the awards? And they went very like almost all the musical stuff in the second act, which is why it didn't really seem like Sunset was sweeping until the second act, whether yeah. they did that deliberately once they knew the results. I was of the opinion that I ended up beating you by one, because by the interval, I think so, yeah. you were two points up mm -hmm. based on our predictions. But then I was trying to count them both and I kept 
counting up and down, and I <laughs> kept getting us both getting 14. All right. So let's go through in order and talk through <clears throat> the winners compared with our predictions, and then we'll tell you more about the performances and the other stuff that happened and went down. Also, I was going to take this off, but I wanted to show you. Uh, I put this on from the suitcase because I was cold walking back, and I put comfortable shoes back on, but is it not kind of giving... Jamie Lloyd's Sunset Boulevard meets the picture of Dorian Gray with this combination of outfits from the beginning then. The first award given out was... Best Revival. Best Revival. We guessed Vanya. It was Vanya. Yeah. One point each. Next up we had... Best Actor in a Supporting Girl. We guessed Will Close. It was Will Close. Yeah. Two points each. Actress in a Supporting Role. We both said Hayden Gwynn. We both said Hayden Gwynn. Um, and it was three points each. Uh, set design. You said Stranger Things. I said things. Stranger Things. I said Sunset <laughs> Boulevard. I was a bit keen. I was a bit prompt on the whole Sunset Boulevard thing. Four, three. <coughs> Costume design. We both said uh, Bunny Christie. Yeah. And it wasn't. It was Mark Howell. For, for Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray. So still four, three. Best actress. You said Laura Donnelly. Yep, you said Sarah Snook. <laughs> yep. 5 3. Aaron, two points up. Best, Best actor. actor. Neither of us said Mark Gatiss, no. although we both loved his performance yeah. and were thrilled that he did win. Uh, new play, we both said Dear England. 6 4. Director, we both did Jamie Lloyd. 7 5. And same out comedy play, we both said Stranger Things. We did both say Stranger Things. <laughs> 8 6. Musical revival. This was a big one. <laughs> Sunset Boulevard did win this, so this mm-hmm. put it to 8-7. This is where I started to pull it back. Musical contribution. You said just for one yeah. day. I said Sunset Boulevard. It was Sunset Boulevard. Now we're tying on 8-8. Eight, eight. Choreographer, we both said Arlene. 9-9. Nine, nine. Fighting design, we both said... Jack Knowles. Knowles, who did win. 10-10. Ten, ten. Sound design, we both said... Adam Fisher. 11-11. Eleven, eleven. Action and supporting role, we both said Amy Trigg. 12-12. 12, 12. Actor in a supporting role, I said Jack Malone. 13. Yes. You said Jack Wolf. 12. So 13-12. This is where I pulled one point ahead. Actor in a musical, we both said Charlie Stemp, but it was Tom Francis. Mm-hmm. Still 13-12. Actress, Nicole Scherzinger. 14-13. And then finally, Mince Meat One Musical. Oh, I got 15. That's where that yeah. happened. So again, like last year, I won by a single point. Yeah. But I didn't know if I would. You know, by the end of that video, when I was editing it through, I was like, Aaron made such a great point. I was, like, convinced by every one of your choices. And I had changed my mind that we were going to see a sunset sweep, and then we did. We did see yeah. a little a little bit of a sunset sweep. What's interesting about the sunset sweep, I think, is that they made some really big wins. Best revival of a musical being the big one. Nicole Scherzinger winning being <laughs> the big one. Tom Francis won for leading actor yeah. rather than Charlie Stemp. Yeah. And, like... Very different types of performances is the thing. And not to take away from Tom Francis's win at all, because he gave a fantastic performance yeah. in that show. Um, the other big one was Jamie Lloyd winning for Best Director as the yeah. only musical theatre director in that category. Yeah, It was him and a bunch of play directors. They should be different categories. I think that proved it even more, like every year you kind of get this the second you go into all those creative categories and it's like how can every play comedy entertainment and musical yeah. including revivals and originals all be in the share of those categories yeah when you look at the tony awards that split so double the amount of people and you're not comparing completely different all the creative mediums. elements are split <clears throat> yeah that i think was an early indication of big things to come for sunset yeah they did win a lot of creative elements, but the one thing they didn't win was for the video set design and video design because they were in one category. (laughs) And kind of the whole thing about Sunset and the whole thing about their performance on the night was the whole video design. And so it's interesting, would they have stood a better chance of winning that if video design was a separate category? Possibly Dorian Gray might still have taken it and like those aren't the only two shows this year that used video design. (laughs) No, because Stranger Things did use video design. Stranger Things did use video design. But it's interesting um, and possibly indicates the need for that to be... A separate division. A separate category. So speaking of then this push for other categories, there was talk of the whole wigs, hair and makeup Mm -hmm. thing. And this has been a a growing conversation during awards season about how wigs, hair and makeup as a creative component, a very important, very valuable, very hardworking creative component of theatre, aren't 
acknowledged in the same way when it comes to awards categories and not just at the Olivier's. Yeah, it, this is at many different awards ceremonies. They're kind of, it kind of feels like it's bestowed on the costume designer to have to thank every other deba- department which are actually led by different heads. Yeah, they're not they're not part of wardrobe no. necessarily. It's just sort of they work in tandem with them, but they're not. Yeah, it's not them as the creative lead on. And so, and Hannah Waddingham acknowledged that in her opening remarks. Um, there were lots of, I don't know how much of what she said at that moment made it into the ITV highlights. Those of you who were watching live, if anyone watched live from outside of the UK or the US or via a VPN, um, then you may have seen that. One of the great things about getting to be in the room, and probably this was on the live stream as well, but was the moments where Hannah Waddingham would then go for a second to take because she's so down to earth and fun yeah. with it. I sidetracked myself. What I was going to say is as well as the wigs, hair and makeup conversation and the video design conversation and conversations about like, do we still need gendered categories? And should there be like one for ensemble costs? A a lot of other conversations about whether these categories are still fit for purpose with how theatre looks in 2024. But also I signed an open letter the other day that I would love to tell you about and it's linked below so you can read it, you can co-sign it, you can share it. Please do all of the below. Um, and that is to do with musical theatre, composers, lyricists, book writers, writers of musicals being properly acknowledged by the Olivier Awards because they are recognised as part of Best New Musical. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works this year, is that for Best New Musical, the people credited and the people who get handed the award and the people who win the award with that win are the writers and that sort of mirrors plays and i like that rather than the playwright getting the award for best new play and the producer getting the award for best new musical however it is still not ideal we should still have separate categories for score we should have a separate category for book of a musical because it is not always a given that the best new musical will have the best score or the best book much as i love them together yeah much as i love operation mincemeat i don't think of of all those same Best New Musicals mm-hmm. with A Strange Loop with Next to Normal and with Help Me, Help Me, Help Me, The Little Big Things. I'm so sorry, The Little Big Things. Um, I don't think Operation Mince Meats is necessarily the best score out mm-hmm. of that from like a dramatic awards perspective. Uh, so I signed an open letter to the Olivier Awards about properly acknowledging musical theatre writers who I say often enough are a very maligned group and that is yeah. because of things like this because the infrastructure doesn't exist and because the effort isn't taken within the UK theatre industry to bring them into the public consciousness. If you were to ask theatre fans on Broadway how many musical theatre composers they could name, even like someone of a more casual uh, relationship to Broadway, they could still probably tell you about Jason Robert Brown and about uh, Sondheim Sondheim and Schwartz and Lin-Manuel Miranda and Rodgers and Hammerstein and Jonathan Larson and Jonathan Larson. (coughs) Here... Even going back a very long time, we still only really have, of British musical theatre composers, it's still Lloyd Webber. Yeah, there's not many that people would be able to name, especially even like regular theatre goers. I don't know how many British composers they'd be able to name. Even like your proper hardcore (coughs) theatre fans, it's them and now Marlon Moss because of Six, but that's only a very recent development. You have Styles and Drew. Drew. But I don't know how many people, how many theatre fans nowadays would be able to name. No, sort of, that was more your early 2000s, wasn't it? Yeah. Um... And so that's the issue we have, and it's things like this that make the difference for yeah. that. I take the time to say all of that because I think it's very, very important. So please, please, please take a look at that open letter, which is below. Consider signing it. Consider sharing it. It would be a big help because that's how uh, change is made. That's how change is made. Performance of the night for you. Ooh. Well, I feel like everybody's going to say some. I feel like most people from my night would say Sunset Boulevard. It was which... a moment. Like, they, and they did what had to be done, and I. They took they took what happened at the theatre and times it by twenty. They did, they did. And if you didn't know, um, and spoiler alert, but they recreated what the way that the opening of the second act of Sunset Boulevard was staged in this particular revival, and they did that comparably at the Royal Albert Hall. We had a little bit of an indication of what was about to happen mm-hmm. because we could see from our vantage point that Nicole Scherzinger had left her seat moments yep. before. That's something. 
that performers do at theatre award shows. They get pulled from their seats to go and like get changed to go perform backstage. But right after she left, they announced that Sunset were about to perform, and we thought well, she doesn't have time to get changed. So Excuse me. No. it was just that she was going to go and stand somewhere, which yeah, which is what happened. And I knew the moment it was going to happen because it's the same moment normally where a a a, a, photo, a poster of her used to be used outside yeah. of. The Savoy, but it was actually her, and then cardboard cut out, Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> and then, personally, I, I loved uh, Little Big Things and Hades Town's performances. Yeah, next to normal, I did <laughs> not know what they were going to do. That was and a really did, fun mashup. They did a cool medley <laughs> of I Miss the Mountain, Superboy, Superboy, <laughs> Superboy and the Invisible Girl, and I'm, I'm Alive. Alive, giving kudos to all three of their nominated principal cast mm-hmm. members, which was exciting. I think Operation Mincemeat made the best choice with their number. Yeah, and that's my favourite out of context performance I've seen Mincemeat yeah. do from like Musical Con, from like West End Live. That was a really <coughs> great job. But my favourite was not a musical. It was that mm-hmm. National Theatre oh, yeah. 60 Years <laughs> salute moment at the end when I realised what it was that was happening and that they were rewording Joseph Fine's monologue from Dear England to be about the National Theatre yeah. and the artists who have worked both on and backstage there over its six decade history and they had this sketch of Wembley Stadium behind him that was panning round and turned into a line <coughs> drawing of the iconic brutalist architecture of the National Theatre and, and then, then the auditorium, the auditorium of, the Olivier. of the Olivier and then you have um, these cast members appearing on stage and performing You'll Never Walk Alone together because of the iconic revival of Carousel with Janie D and Joanna Riding who were in that <laughs> and like just a huge amount of history on stage and then the moment and then <sighs> the you had the um, Joey from War Horse Joey came the on horse stage. from War Horse came out on stage who I just love <laughs> Rufus Norris the outgoing artistic director of the National Theatre wearing a captain's armband mm-hmm. uh, in a nod to dear England taking it off and passing it to Indu I could cry talking about this taking it off and passing it to Indu Rubisingham who is the uh, incoming artistic director who's going to replace him at the National Theatre who's the first female first woman in post mm-hmm. it's such it was such a lovely gesture a brilliant salute to and in a year where the National is so well represented yeah. at the Olivier's I thought that was very well deserved yeah. It did not seem gratuitous at all. No, this is the year where everybody has been saying that the National Theatre has been on a roll, so it felt kind of an, yeah. a beautiful way of saying, without being like too like, look at how many nominations we've had this year. It was yeah. also a nice way to say it's six decades, and people could then be like, yes, and it has been a year for that theatre. It really has. <laughs> and people always talk... Oh, I see a lot of people saying on these things that they want to see more performances <laughs> from plays, and eventually this gave way to something with music. But um, to use Dear England to do that, I thought was very clever. And just the just the imagery and just the symbolism of him passing mm-hmm. that captain's wristband to Indu was one of the several moments when I cried. I cried almost any time someone uh, like talked about a family member who was no longer with us or who had inspired them or a parent who was still with us and who was there in the room. That got me. <coughs> but also something that you know where they did the they they do this segment where they just show very brief um clips of what's gonna cut what's coming in this new season the next yeah. season something that i thought when they had that moment was that it would be nice if instead of doing it like that there was a form of very like not a full number mm-hmm. but like something visually on stage that would let both shows do like a very short like 30 second preview it and it'll be like back to back to back rather than it feeling yeah. rather than I feel like them trying to find segments of their EPKs that would then work for I a bash and showcase mean, it yeah I think I think I mean there's logistical challenges <laughs> oh, that come course. with that as well I also think I would have liked to have seen at the beginning just like a looking back on the year beyond just the shows because it's a handful of shows from many that get yeah. nominated and so like you had shows that had like <coughs> one or two nominations like just for one day was yeah. represented and Hades Town was just about represented and Hades Town got to perform um but like we've had the time travelers wife this year and we've had doubtfire and we've had the witches and we've had and bake off 
Bake Off, we've had a great many shows that were not represented within the nominations <coughs> entirely. It would have been nice to see, like, a, let's look back on the year... Secret Life of Bees. That we had Secret Life of Bees. Yeah. All of those, and just be like, oh yeah, that was the whole year. Because that's a big part of why we go to the Olivier yeah. Awards, is because we spend all year working in, alongside the London theatre industry. Mm-hmm. So this kind of feels like our end of year party. Yeah, it's like, it's like, a, new, it's like a new year in some ways. Like, <clears throat> the next season has already started as soon as the nominations end. You're going to be having conversations with me <clears throat> tomorrow. Okay, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you're not already, honestly, because I tell him that he can't start talking about it until this Olivier Awards is over. So we're going to be think... on a plane tomorrow. I'm going to be working. He's going to lean over. He's going to be like, "So for 2025." I mean, I don't know. I think because of how overwhelmingly massive the current opening situation is in New York. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be. That's the next. The discussion focus. is that we're yeah. now in the run up to. We turn our Tony's. attention now towards the Tony Awards. Yep. Um, but sticking with the Olivier's for now, speeches of the night. Sleepover. Sleepover. It was a fantastic speech. It was uh, full of intersectional advocacy mm-hmm. and sort of admonition <coughs> of government arts cuts. And also saying about ticket prices. Yeah, and... talking about like the cast who would have loved to have been at the Olivier's, but tickets were too expensive. Hayden Gwynn's son, the late, brilliant Hayden Gwynn, who not only won posthumously, um, <coughs> having been nominated several times in her lifetime for an Olivier Award, she sadly passed away last year, shortly after appearing on stage in uh, the Great British Bake Off and when Winston went to war with the wireless for which she was nominated. <laughs> but she'd never won an Olivier Award in her no. lifetime, so she finally won posthumously. Uh, and But not only that, she was also name-checked by Stephen Daldry, who shared later when Stranger Things won Best uh, Entertainment, Entertainment or Comedy or play, play, ironically, over old friends. But my point was, when she won, it was accepted by her son. And the very first thing that he said was... Uh, he had no, something to the effect of like he had no idea what to say or what could he possibly say. And then proceeded to give one of the most beautifully heartfelt and emotionally articulate speeches... <laughs> Just absolute, just completely, just meaningful, and again, I'm sobbing. It yeah. was beautiful. It was a really strikingly powerful moment, and I loved a lot of just like how down to earth a lot of the other speeches were, and how genuinely moved and <laughs> thrilled that you could see that everyone was. Yeah, I think there was a lot of people that were surprised. Lovely to see and hear so much. Uh, thanks and consideration for like everyone for the yeah. whole team for the front of house for like whether that was Tom, Fr- Tom Francis <laughs> talking about the security staff who were with him during Sunset Boulevard Sarah Snook making a point of saying this is not a one person <laughs> show I am on stage with, with the, the crew, crew. Uh, I loved that when Tom Francis performed Sunset Boulevard <laughs> he bowed with the camera operators <clears throat> but I also love that when they pre them starting that also name checked the camera operator because she has done the full run p- previously so it was also saying like this feat that Tom Fran like everybody yeah. talks about Tom Francis but it's like this feat is not just Tom Francis like it does that whole movement and everything so it was nice to see yeah the there's a bit of the build. Ginger Rogers to it as well in the terms of like have to do everything Fred Astaire does <laughs> but backwards and in heels because there are moments where those camera operators have to walk backwards yeah. holding a camera, which was another fun thing, separate to Sunset Boulevard, that you got to watch because, obviously, an ITV broadcast was being filmed inside the Royal Albert Hall, so you saw people running around with cameras, and then the person running behind them yeah. gathering the cables, which was uh, it's fun to watch chaos like that. The most wowed I was by anyone's outfit, I think, was Jack Wolf's. Mm-hmm. Um, just a lot of really interesting elements a little bit of like the regency look about it yeah, the sound off in the comments down below should should Aaron and I wear cravats and that we could do matching cravats next year how do we top this like what are we wearing <coughs> 2025 at the Olivier Awards which is going to be very interesting because there's so many more new British musicals opening see he's already talking about it I told you I told you this would happen um, but for now, we turn our attention towards the Tony Awards. If anyone has any other questions about 
the Olivier's will be happy to answer down below. But for now, uh, we need to go and like sleep. sleep and then finish packing. Also, and I don't know if you'll be able to listen to this back, I I booked <coughs> later flights tomorrow on the basis we could have a lion post Olivier's, but I'm actually going to have to set an alarm and <coughs> chat about the Olivier Awards at 7.15 a.m. on BBC Radio 5. Mm. Um, I told you that earlier, didn't I? Yes. I did. I'm telling you again. Uh, I've become delirious. Thank you for joining us for the Olivier Awards and this always mad recap. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed for the Tony Awards coverage. That's what's coming next here on my channel as we fly off to New York to go and see as many shows as possible in two weeks. And I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. Bye. Bye, -bye. Now, the Olivier Awards took place last night at the Royal Albert Hall in West London. Best Actress went to the Succession star Sarah Snook for The Picture of Dorian Gray, a production in which she takes on all 26 roles. She said it was a dream come true. Any sort of little theatre nerd who wanted to get up on the stage and then here she is being on the stage in London, in, in the West End. Not even close to what I thought was possible. Let's talk to Mickey Joe Boucher, who is a theatre critic and YouTuber, was there at the awards last night. How was it? It was fantastic. It was it was another really great year for London theatre, represented by a pretty brilliant ceremony. Good. I mean, does it all feel a bit lovey-lovey when you're there, or do you think this genuinely speaks to sort of ordinary people who just like going to, to take in a show? Do you know what was really nice last night was so many of the speeches felt very down-to-earth, just so many people um, uh, thanking their parents who had bought seats up in the gallery, just people genuinely just working hard in their creative careers and uh, seemingly just very blown away by the recognition. Were there any real surprises in the winners? Um, I don't know that I'd say huge surprises. Mark Gatiss won for Best Actor and, you know, very celebrated and playing Sir John Gielgud. Um, but he was up against some very stiff competition. Andrew Scott, David Tennant, Joseph Fiennes, James Norton. Um, I was very pleased to see him win. Yeah, actually, all those really recognised stars of the screen as well. Mm -hmm. There's definitely high value in having a successful West End run these days, isn't there? There is, yep, there really is. Uh, what else then? Let's talk about some of the musicals. Nicole Scherzinger, um, who was a hot favourite going into it, won Best Actress in a Musical, is that right, the category? She did, yes, she did for Sunset Boulevard. They had a little bit of a sweep, um, especially as we entered the second act with some of those musical categories. They took Best Director as well in a category of directors of plays and musicals. Now, this was the only director nominated for directing a musical, so that was a really big win for them. And uh, just finally to mention Dear England, the play based on uh, Gareth Southgate's um, management of the England football team, which I've heard is going to be made, I didn't realise it's going to be made into a TV drama as well. Joseph Fiennes missed out, but it won a Best New Play Award. It did win the Best New Play Award uh, for writer James Graham, which I think was brilliantly deserved in how it's moved forwards uh, theatre, but also brought in so many new people to the theatre and so many brilliant conversations between, uh, you know, people from the football world, people from the theatre world. And Joseph Fiennes did get to perform one of the most memorable moments of the night, uh, a tribute to 60 years of the National Theatre and the handing over of the previous artistic director to the new artistic director, Indu Rubasingham. That was a very memorable moment. Very much, Mickey Joe. Thanks for talking to us after a late night as well. Thank you yeah, so much. After. Oh, that went quite well. I didn't get to mention mincemeat. I'm so upset. I really wanted to talk about mincemeat being a huge win for um, just like intrepid early career theatre makers coming from the new diorama, coming from Southwark, coming from Riverside Studios, starting in 80 seat venues. I didn't really get the prompt. I should have jumped on it when it was, let's talk about musicals, Nicole Scherzinger and Sunset, she'd been like, yep, that's great. They had a sweep. I, just, I wanted to say as well that they won for everyone except their video design team. I wanted to talk about the categories that weren't recognized. You can't do it all. I was chatting for five minutes, did what I could uh, to bring some insights to the nation. And I wanted to tie in with the football thing because they were talking about the Premier League before me. But, you know, it's early. I made some notes. I planned some talking points. I did what I could. I'm very sleepy, um, but I think that went quite well and I didn't make a fool of myself on the radio. Good job, team. For 10 more seconds.
I'm Minky Joe Theater. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe!